Hey there, Louis Akabalos here. Thanks for stopping by. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can conditionally hide and show fields on a SharePoint list new item form. Now, before we get started, if you find this tutorial helpful, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date on the latest content that I publish. Now let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, now we're going to start off by looking at how you can conditionally hide and show a field on the SharePoint new item form. And we're going to do this with a choice type column to start. Now you can see here that I have a list that is being used to record information about customers. And specifically, you'll see that I have a column called country. And I also have two columns one is called state and one is called province. Now what we're going to do is we're going to build out a formula on the state and province field. And specifically, we are going to implement a formula that says only show state if the country is USA and only show province if the country is Canada. Now really important note when you're implementing these conditional formulas, you can only do them on columns that are not required. And we're going to see this when we actually get into building out the formula. Now, the first thing that you want to do is click on the new button here. And then you want to go ahead and scroll to the top of this form. And you want to click on this edit form dropdown. And then you want to go ahead and click edit columns. Now, you can see here that title and country are grayed out. Now, the reason that these are grayed out again is that these are required fields. Now, if I scroll down to my state field and I place my cursor on the three dots at the end of this row and click on it, you can see here that I have an option to edit conditional formula. Now, before I actually click into this again, if I do that with my mandatory fields, you'll see that I don't have an option to apply a conditional formula. So again, really important, you can only build out these conditions on fields or columns in your list that are not required. Now we're gonna start off by implementing our formula on the state column. So I'm gonna click on the three dots and then click on edit conditional formula. And that's going to bring up this window here where you can input your formula. Now I've gone ahead and I've added my formula to this input box here. Now let's do a quick walkthrough of that formula. Now the formula is always going to start with equals if followed by open bracket and an important note. The next thing that we need to do is reference the choice column that we would like to check our condition on. Now, in this case, we're looking at the country field or column and depending on what value is entered there, we're either going to hide or show this field. Now, really important note, you'll notice here that in front of the column that we're referencing, I have a dollar sign. So that's really important when you're adding these conditional formulas, you need to place this dollar sign before the column that you're referencing. And that's different from when you're building out formulas in calculated columns, you don't need to add that dollar sign. Now the next piece of the formula is our equals operator. Now in this case, the equals operator is two equals symbols. And again, that's different than when you're building out formulas in calculated columns. And then we need to actually add the condition that we're checking. So this formula says if country equals USA, so that is the condition that we're looking to evaluate as being true. And if it's true, then we want to show the state field. Then we have a comma followed by true, which is inside of single quotation marks. And then we have another comma, which is followed by false which is inside single quotation marks again. So if country equals USA, then show this state field, otherwise hide it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click save, but before I do that, I just wanna call your attention to the fact that right now the state field is not grayed out in the edit columns list. After we save the formula and then save this menu, you're going to see that then makes the column that you've built the formula on grayed out. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And you can see here that our formula was accepted and I'm gonna go ahead and click save again. And now if I click back into my edit columns field, you can see here that state is grayed out and it resembles the appearance of our mandatory columns or fields. But again, it is not mandatory. It just means that you cannot hide this given that there's a condition implemented on it. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and click cancel. Now I've gone ahead and I've opened my new item form here so that we can test this. Now I've populated some of the fields here. Now you'll notice that the country is set to Canada and the state field is not displayed. Now when I go ahead and change this to USA, you can see here that the state field was added and I can go in and select a value from that list. And again, if I change this country back to Canada, you can see that that state field is hidden. All right, now very quickly, I am now going to add my formula to the province field. And again, to do this, you wanna click on the new button and you want to click on the edit form dropdown and you wanna click on edit columns. Then you want to place your cursor over the field that you want to hide or show and you want to click on the three dots and you wanna click on edit conditional formula. And then you wanna go ahead and embed your formula now I've built out my formula for this province column. And again, this time it says if country equals Canada, then show the province field, otherwise hide it. Now I'll go ahead and click save and I'm gonna click on save and I'm gonna close out of my new item form. Now I'll go ahead and test it by clicking on the new button. And you can see here that by default, that province field is not being displayed and that's because the default value in my country column is set to USA. When I go ahead and change this to Canada, you can see here that the state field has been hidden and the province field has been displayed. So that's how to conditionally hide and show fields on a SharePoint new item form by building out conditional formulas that reference or check values in choice type columns. Next, we're gonna look at how you can do this by referencing or checking a yes, no, or a binary column type in a SharePoint list. All right, now you can see here that I have a column that is called VIP, and this is a yes, no type column. Now, these columns are displayed as checkboxes by default in your SharePoint list, and I also have a text field called VIP reason. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a conditional formula that says only display VIP reason if the VIP column is checked. Now again, you wanna click on the new button, click on the edit form menu, and you click on edit columns. Now I'm going to scroll down to my VIP reason column, and I'm going to click on the three dots and click edit conditional formula. And then I'm gonna go ahead and paste in my formula here. Now, when you're building out these formulas with yes, no columns, the only difference from what we saw earlier in the tutorial with the choice type column is that here, our check only needs to specify either true or false. Now, when you're working with yes, no columns, yes equals true and no equals false. So the way that this formula is built, it says if VIP is checked, i.e. if it's yes, then display this VIP reason field, otherwise hide it. So again, with yes, no columns, our conditional check true is equal to yes and false is equal to no. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click save and I'm gonna click save again. And this time I'm going to cancel out of my new item form and I'm gonna click on new again. Now you can see here that the default value for VIP is set to yes or checked and the VIP reason field is displayed. Now when I uncheck this, you can see here that that VIP reason field has been hidden. And if I go ahead and click on it, you can see here that that field is displayed. So that's how to apply these conditional formulas to hide show fields based on the values in a yes, no type column. Next, we're gonna go ahead and look at how to do this with date type columns. All right, now I've gone ahead and I've added a date time column to my list. Now you can see here renewal date, and I've also added a column called discount offered. Now what we're going to do is we are going to conditionally hide or show this discount offered field subject to the value that is entered in the renewal date. Now, again, you wanna go ahead and click on the new button, and then you wanna click on edit form, and then you wanna go ahead and click edit columns, and you want to click into the field that you want to hide or show. Now, I'm going to click on my discount offered field, and I'm going to click on the three dots, and then click edit conditional formula. 
Now I've gone ahead and I've added my formula into the formula field. Now you can see here that the formula is identical to the other formulas that we've looked at thus far in that they start with equals if and then the actual column that we want to reference. Now in this case, that column is the renewal date column. Now you can also see that I've incorporated a less than or equals operator here just by putting the less than sign and the equal sign. And next what I've done is I've specified a specific date period here. So you can see to do that, you're essentially hard coding your date. So this formula is saying if the renewal date is less than or equal to July 31st, 2022, then show the discount offered field, otherwise hide the field. Now, really important note, when you're working with date formulas in the context of hiding and showing fields on your form, unfortunately, you cannot reference other date fields. So if, for example, you had a task list and you had an end date and you wanted to look at whether that end date came before the current date to determine if it's late, fortunately, you cannot do that. What you can do is you can kind of hard code in these dates or you can even build date ranges uh, and you can evaluate whether or not a condition is true between two dates, but you can't reference another date column. Now, what I've done is I've actually included the link to Microsoft's documentation, which provides samples in the description below. And that article also outlines some of the limitations of building out these um, hide and show conditions here in the SharePoint list form. We're also gonna look at some of those limitations explicitly at the end of this tutorial. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And you can see here that my formula was accepted. Now I'll go ahead and click save again. And now I'll just close out of my form here and I'm gonna click on the new button to test this. Now you can see here that the discount offered field is displayed. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select a date that is after July 31st. So I'm gonna go ahead and select September 1st. And you can see here that once I select that date, the discount offered field disappeared. All right, and next we're going to look at how you can conditionally hide and show a field based on the values that are entered in a number type field. All right, now you can see here that I've added a number type column to my list called purchase volume. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a formula that says only show the discount offered field if the purchase volume is greater than 5,000. Now I'll go ahead and click on the three dots here and click edit conditional formula. And I've gone ahead and I've pasted in my formula here. Now you can see when we're referencing number type columns, it is the same formula we can use our greater than or equal to operator and we just insert our numeric value. Now I'll just go ahead and add another zero there and I'll click save and I'll go ahead and click save again. Now you can see by default that discount offered field is hidden and if I go ahead and put 9,000 in this field, then you can see the discount offered field is displayed. Now that's how to conditionally hide and show a field on your SharePoint list form when checking condition against a numeric value in a number type column. Now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and look at some of the limitations that you need to be aware of when building out these conditional hide and show fields on your SharePoint list new item form. All right, now in terms of limitations, the thing that you really need to be aware of is that there are a number of unsupported column types when working with these conditional formulas to hide and show fields on the new item form. Now I've put the link to this document in the description below, but you can see here the list of unsupported column types, and that list includes person or group type fields with multiple selections. So you can build if statements that look at usernames or email addresses, but you can't have it check for multiple usernames or email addresses. Then you can also see that you cannot build out a conditional formula with a choice type column that has multiple selections permitted on that column. You can see that time calculations in date and time columns are not permitted. Currency columns, location, 
calculated columns. And if you're using managed metadata, that is not supported when working with these conditional formulas as well. So that's it. In this tutorial, I showed you how to conditionally hide and show fields on a SharePoint list new item form. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest tutorials that I publish. I'm Louis Yacobalas. Thanks for stopping by. Talk soon.